All right, I'm trying to figure out what other types of ReZero content can I watch without being spoiled. And Chibi covered a lot of ReZero during, you know, when it first aired. This, this is from eight years ago, man. Let's go back in the time machine and see what Chibi has to say about ReZero Episode 1. Fun fact. I think that I was sub to Chibi when he was not even at like 5,000 subscribers. Straight up. Like, I know this intro. Like, this is so nostalgic. This is such a long, long time ago, man. Holy shit, blast of the past. Oh. My goodness. It just sounds just like him still, huh? Got more, it got more uh, fluffy hair right now, but yeah, this, this is the setup back in the day. We got Asuna over here, right? Kirito, Chopper, Boa Hancock. I think that's Saber. I think this is from Assassination Classroom. This is Hollow, right? Or Horo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He looks so much younger, Lamal. Bro, what did you think? He's gonna look older eight years ago? <laughs> of course he's gonna look young. This is eight years ago. How did this series just go under the radar for so long? How yeah. did this series not get hyped up? Is this true? When ReZero was airing, sorry, let me switch the headsets. But when ReZero was airing in 2016, I remember seeing like a demographic map of seeing like what is the most popular animes that's being watched, like most watched anime uh, global maps. And I remember it's just every, the entire globe was just like colored in orange, which you know, it's ReZero, right? So when ReZero was first airing, there was no hype. There was no advertisement, little to no people talking about it. It showed up and just took it by storm. Why? Why is this series have such a low fan base? I'm very curious about this because I've seen it, honestly, I've seen it here and there, people recommending ReZero, but I haven't seen it to the extent of other series from this season. Like what? And when I watched this- What was airing back in 2016, man? Episode, and I see that the episode, the first episode, has an hour-long runtime, or 40 yeah. minutes if you cut the commercials, I'm like, the fuck? Yeah. Like, I, I just- I mean, in 2024, it's more common to have basically a huge, huge premiere of episode one. Like, right? Freedom dropped four episodes in one go, right? Demon Slayer, uh, most recent Hostra training arc, dropped the longest one too, right? Sharp a little bit. I'm like, what? Like, hour long, first step. What? Last time this has happened, that was, I think, I know one of the Monogatari series, I think it got an hour long episode, but I think it was released two episodes at once. Mm. But uh, the last known series I reviewed, was Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. And when I think of a series that gets an hour long first episode, I'm thinking like, damn, the company that's working on this must really like this series. They must really- Yeah, I mean, it's true. I guess that was that different in, you know, season uh, 2016, huh? True, Oshinoku also, one hour premiere. I, well, in, in, in a pure <laughs> reaction content strategy perspective, I don't like it when it's multiple episodes and one releases. For the consumer, it's nice, but for me, it just means one less video that I'm able to publish per day because obviously instead of one, you know, the amount of time it requires is pretty much two videos on one, right? But, you know, it is still fun, that whole 15-minute episode. I made that shit into an almost fucking two-hour reaction, and that shit was good. That was very fun to watch really want to go all in. They really want to go all in for the series. So I'm like, okay, so I got an hour. I got an hour to watch on this series. Hmm. So that was my first general impressions before I even started ReZero. I actually walked in the series not really knowing a whole lot. And now watching it, mm. the summary is a lie. It doesn't really tell you jack shit, which I kind of avoid a majority of the summary. It might say it, but from what I remember from the summary, it doesn't tell you jack shit to what really happened in this uh this first episode and I, I just quickly want to say something i'm a big fanboy of Boku no Hero academia i'm a big <laughs> fanboy of jojo wonder if he would say the same thing now listen I, I i think that my hero academia was a bit different back in 2016. i think it was a totally different culture back then okay right now People are shitting on it left, right, and center, right? Back then, I think it was different. Back then, I think it was like, oh my god. 
with Naruto manga being finished, the same with Bleach, is My Hero Academia gonna be the next one to take up the mantle? That was, I think, the uh, narrative. And if those series were not airing at this time, like if they were not coming out right now, yeah. and I didn't love both series, and I wasn't a fanboy of them, I would probably say right now, this so far has the strongest start of spring of anime 2016 death i agree without even knowing what other animes were in 2016 because that one hour that 50 minute episode man was so immersive it was such a good episode in just the span of one single hour well it's two hours for us i just felt like the world building was on another level the way that they introduced us to this new world of isekai and slowly dropping little clues and little jargons, the different wording that they use without fully explaining. Just a perfect example of show don't tell, of getting the audience a first time introduction to the show. And I felt like, like there's a lot of different animes I'm watching right now where I don't give a fuck about it, even though it looks so good. The fights are hype, the animations are crisp, the soundtrack is on point. But because of the lack of world building or some way of me not being pulled into that world, I just don't care. Even if it looks good. But like Reesdro from the immediately just drew me in. And I'm so, so immersed. To the point that on episode 3, we got Elsa versus Reinhardt. Right? The amount of like camaraderie and respect that was being shown to this knight of knights. This sword saint. Right? All these different things make me actually care about the stories and the characters. To the point where I'm like, this doesn't feel cheap. And I guess that's only, that's just another proof that Reesdro's storytelling is another level. Definitely strongest start yet. Now, to get into some things, okay? If you have yet to watch this, let me tell you some of the themes or settings, and then you can go watch it, and then I want to dive into, you know, spoiler territory of the first episode. So, okay. the themes of ReZero is medieval, obviously. It's kind of set into a medieval fantasy world. So, if you Isakai. like Konosuba from last season, like, this is a very good recent example. If you like Konosuba, okay? It's not exactly like it, so don't think it is. But if you like the setting of Konosuba, and you like how a character kind of gets, like, transported into another world, you might like the setting, okay? I guess Isekai was so new of a concept in terms of animations back in 2016. We don't even have the term Isekai to refer to right now. I love how like right now Chibi is mentioning what kind of show this is without being able to say Isekai, right? It's just like transporting a different world, medieval setting. But obviously as more Isekais gets pumped out after ReZero success, then we're, we're more familiar with different terminologies. Because that's similar, not exactly, but similar to how it happens. And on top of that, it has a more serious atmosphere. Definitely. It has a serious atmosphere. It does yes, it have does. its comedy. Not to the extent of Konosuba, but it does have its comedy. But it has a serious atmosphere building up behind the scenes throughout the entire yep. episode for that final conclusion. Now, you do get to see brief glimpses of this serious atmosphere right at the beginning of the episode. Especially with the music and the tone. You get to see the tone shifts back and forth. <laughs> right? The two are like dying. And apparently what happened in the anime in how Subaru is dying in the cellar with Amelia and making that wish of, you know, I'm going to save her no matter what, happening in tandem with him leaving the fairy mart. It, apparently, that was just like an anime-only thing. But it, I wonder why they would do that to make it, make it seem to suggest that, like, both things happen at, like, the same time in peril. That was, like, a very interesting touch that they did there. Which I'm not going to dive into because I want to, you know, tell you all if you've yet to see the episode, just go watch it. It was a very good first episode so it has stuff like that it has stuff about medieval fantasy has tone shifts with dark and dark you know themes and comedy but then on top of that with the final reveal which i don't want to spoil yet because the like i said i'm trying to let you all know if you have yet to see the episode there's an unexpected theme at the end of the episode which i didn't expect so go go watch it now that I said that, I'm going to give you all three seconds, and then I'm going to dive into some spoiler territory. Oh on no, Reason we're getting get my spoiled! Actual real first impressions out. Oh no! So three, or, two, what the fuck, three, two, one. Spoilers. Zato. Okay, so yeah, the time traveling stuff. Yeah. Instant Steins Gate vibes. Now, I did talk about this on Twitter, and a couple of Chibits kind of, you know, I had a conversation with them, and we had, you know, we're talking about, you know, overall thoughts on. You know, ReZero. I was mentioning how it reminded me a lot of Steins Gate in the way, because of the way the ending was executed. And it, it is similar in a way. It really is. I mean, you have it to where 
the main female character, she dies at the end, and you see another girl die, and then time resets to a certain point, and then he has to redo it over. And then, after getting to talk with a couple of achievements on Twitter, it changed my overall impressions of how this time traveling works, or what it's okay. very similar to. It's very similar, in a way, to all you need is kill. And it's also very similar to as if, you know, your life is, you know, having a redo. Like, if you have a uh, checkpoint in your life, and you have a new plus one. You know, like, let's say, a one. Yeah, it's pretty much that, right? You die, you restart at a checkpoint. The checkpoint is the Oppo Man in the beginning, and until you overcome these trials and tribulations, you know, the first trial being overcoming Elsa and the loot seller, you can't, you know, progress. Or at least that's my assumption. Now, we haven't died after that, after episode 3, right? So it'll be interesting to see what the new checkpoint's gonna be, but it's just a simple story. Of, it's not simple, but it is just regression. You die, you go back to the checkpoint, and you redo. Now, what I'm still unconvinced about is, like, how similar is each run in terms of the events that happen according to the scripts? Because, like, that one time when we helped out Appa Man's kid with Amelia, we happened in the first iteration, but during the second iteration, we don't help her, but Amelia actually did. So that event, even if we avoided it, someone else did it, almost as if it's following a script, right? I'm still trying to figure out like a pattern of behavior. Now, let's think of Mario, okay? You get a checkpoint, you die, you go back to the checkpoint, you start yeah. back over. That's exactly what this kind of is. It's not exactly Steins Gate with, you know, the D-mail and stuff, but it's... It reminded me that. It gave me the time traveling vibes, which there is time traveling, or at the very least, it's resetting in some way, which we don't get to find out exactly how this works yet. Which I pray, Not I, yet. I, I really pray, we find a reason to why we find out how he can use time traveling. Because. I mean, my still guess is just as simple as when he was dying in the first round with Amelia. He made that declaration of resolve, and I think that somehow there's this association with Satella, the half-elf taboo, and Amelia, and how similar they look. And because we also see the imagery of the dark hand showing up, which has also been shown multiple times in the openings and the endings, I can't help but think that Subaru subconsciously made a deal with Satella and got those regression powers in order to, like, protect Amelia. It seems like everything is centered around Amelia and preventing her from dying. That is my guess on how we got those regression powers. Now, I still don't get how he just blinked into the Isekai world. That part's very unclear. And the only way that I could have, you know, theorized and figured that out is if the anime-only part of them dying in the cellar and him walking out of the 7-Eleven happened in tandem. So again, the theme of the beginning of the end and the end of the beginning. Almost that two different things were happening in parallel, even though it's different time flows of time passage. And simply him dying there was almost like him being transported there. It's like, boom! new, you know, uh, checkpoint, and then starting there from scratch. I, I thought that was what's going on. But again, it's like the chicken and the egg of like, well, what happened first? Did he get entered then first? Then did he get the powers? I'm not sure, but I still feel like the regression powers stems from Satella. Because if not, I don't want to experience the same exact thing with, you know, the uh, erased, you know, final episode. So getting off of that, though, the, the themes of it, especially the dark, serious themes, was unexpected. Mm -hmm. I, I did not think it would... The dark themes of what, like Elsa cutting your gut open and then poking and <laughs> getting down bad for it? Dive into something like that. When you saw the character in the middle half of the episode, he just dies like he does. He just fucking drops dead. Like, yeah. you know, you have the, where the main female character, she dies. Yeah. And then the main character, he just, he walks into the fucking door. His belly gets slit and he just falls over dead. And I'm like, damn, that was fast. Like, I'm like. What the fuck? <laughs> That's my face. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you, you, like what? I'm like, what? So when the character dropped dead, I'm like, yeah. is that GG? Is it? Is this? Yeah, exactly. But it's like a main character can't just die, right? And we're thinking like, well, what's gonna happen now? How the fuck is he gonna survive this? And then it goes boom. And then we're in front of the Oppa Man. It's just like, oh shit, we got ourselves a fucking regression story, baby. This is this fucking GG? And so. When we find out he went back and he's like, you know, all blurry and stuff, he's like, huh? Huh? And I'm like, this is a time traveling anime. Yeah. Ah. So, it's going to be that type of series. It's going to be a series that focuses on the main character trying to figure out what is going on here, why he was summoned to this world. And I have a couple of slight theories. It's not completely, you know, has a huge foundation point yet, like where it's a, has a lot of pillars backing it up because this was the first episode and there's not a whole lot of information we know of at this point. But judging by how we're getting into like, you know, time traveling and stuff, 
I'm going to just assume, with the way the first part of this episode was executed, I want to assume that there was, like, another dimension of himself or something. Maybe, you know, there's different timelines similar to Steins okay. Gate, like, different world lines. Not exactly, but you, you get my point. And, like, another one of his cells, like, called himself into the world. Like, you see okay. it to where he's like, help me and stuff. You see this hand reaching out, and if you go back to it, it's very similar to what happened to the main character. And because of this, as soon as you see this, you see it how he's sucked into this world. So I'm assuming that either A, his other self from another like dimension or parallel universe summoned him into that universe to fix things, or B, someone else gave him this ability at the last second to be able to do I like that part. I like the latter, and that someone else's satellite is my still guess. Do this. One or the other has happened, but I will say, however, when it comes to the way this episode was orchestrated, this a fantastic episode it really was and yeah i think that like again this is an anime you know eight years ago i don't i don't i know that's not like a necessarily a decade yet but nearly a decade after that first episode is leagues better than most of the fucking seasonal animes that we cover on this channel i can because i've watched so much trash in mid animes simply by checking out like a lot of the seasonal anime that's been happening it's easy for me to decipher what is actually good because it's just a totally separate experience most of the times it's just like all right another fucking you know six out of ten anime we're checking out let's have fun but sometimes when greatness shows up i'm like oh okay the reaction times gets longer too instead of like a 30 minute reaction it's like a 50 minute reaction per episode there's just more things to talk about it's a phenomenal episode <laughs> The budget wise, like when it comes to, you know, the production, animation, art. There was a lot of CGI assets and the NPCs in the background shit. However, it did not feel bad. It felt like, cause like the way that they use CGI recently, they're really getting lazy of just copy pasting all these different soldiers and bucket helmets and hiding their faces. The ReZero CGI, they actually went out of the ways to, you know, have unique designs for every background asset characters, which I actually kind of appreciated. And the implementation of the CGI where it does not distract you from the 2D animation, I think that's the most core focus of whether or not CGI is good. CGI, just because it's CGI doesn't mean it's bad. It's just how it's implemented and does it like get you a whiplash when you transition from CGI to non-CGI. That's what I look for. The art is not the best. It's not the best I've ever seen. Yeah, it's not ufotable art, but it's definitely fucking top tier. If I had to really say Boku no Hero Academia, easily probably one of the best, or JoJo from the season in terms of art style yeah. and animation, of course. Now, regardless of some certain issues, especially with the animation art of ReZero, there was some good scenes, especially when it did come to the animation art, which was that fighting scene at the end of the episode. Yeah, when Felt is like running in with the blessing of the wind, bro, you could s just sense how fast she was moving. Like, that was some great animation sequences. And clearly, they were saving a lot of budget, at the very least, or a lot of, you know, production that they were working on this first episode for- And here's the thing. When you already give me great story writing, and world building, it's gonna go the Kumo Deska way, where even if they botch the animation, I'm not gonna care because I'm here to watch the story. I don't really care about the fights. The fights are only hype because of the story and the expectations and the world building and the different characterizations and having some sort of expectations of who these characters are. That's why the fights are hyped to me. But even if the animations were botched, which I hope it isn't, and I know it's not gonna be, I don't care because the story is that good. Unfortunately, failure frame is the opposite, where it's just like, I'm still waiting. I still can't be convinced if it's good or not. I'm, just, I'm still waiting for the story to fucking go. But if it's taking like four or five episodes and you still haven't hooked me in, I'm not sure if it's a good look. And with more shitty CGI, it's going to make me more biased towards hating the show more and more, right? You can't have shitty CGI and a shitty story. You need to have good story if you're going to compensate for the lack of fight animation through CGI, bro. Or that scene in general, which it paid off because it really set the tone of what we could expect for the upcoming fights in the series. Because I'm willing to bet that this is not the last fight we're going to see. But that... <laughs> yeah, no... Yeah, hot take. Whoa. Hottest take of ReZero so far is that we're going to get more fights after episode one. No way, Chibi. That fight scene with the bartender, the giant dude, that Rungy. had a big-ass fucking club. He looked like a giant, giant barbarian. He reminded me of someone you would see from Castle Crashers. He goes in. He grabs his 
fucking big ass club and he's just slamming the damn tables around. And then what happens? Literally just gets killed with a fucking glass of milk mug that Elsa crashes onto the ground. I'm breaking everything and r right off the bat you notice that he's way too slow. He's way too slow against the person he's fighting and you know he's probably going to die. But still, the fighting scene with the frames, like the frames per second they used along with the, how fluid it was, it looked beautiful. It looked absolutely one thing that I didn't like is how dark the environment is, but I understand that if you're trying to, you know, sell for Beat Bill and Blu-ray DVDs, there's like other incentives you can do, right, to get people to buy the Blu-ray DVD releases, but anytime you're in a dark environment and the shading is so dark that you can't see anything, and then top of that, I have to put the fucking visual overlay on the YouTube. The people on YouTube can't even see what the fuck is going on, but eh, it is what it is beautiful when you see that fighting scene and i didn't expect the gore as well oh my god now there was censorship i, I did notice censorship there was some black bars here and there slowly covering it over but i believe that since the way it was done bd dvds will clear that up completely yeah. at the very least it wasn't to the extent of terraform Mars that did this season just completely axing out you know gore in general even that roach violence you're like what the fuck so 10 points 10 plus points ju just a couple points, it's just 10 plus, what, whatever. It's just a lot of points added to ReZero just for, at the very least, handling this censorship in that way. Even though I'm not a fan of it, I know Japan has their own laws and stuff and they can't really help that. I'm willing to bet that if the animators were allowed to, they would make it uncensored if they could. So I'm very happy to see how it was done like that. So there is a lot of hope for BD DVDs to have some really good ass content in it. But getting back into it let's get back into the plot okay so what's going on here with the story Tell is that me. our mc has been sucked into this world and you don't really get explained why he's sucked in this world but like i've already kind of slightly dived into i'm assuming obviously someone else summoned him into the world but i believe it is himself his own self i still feel like it's the witch of envy that did it or at the very least, it's the Witch of Envy that gave him the regression power. But how he blinked into the world, I'm not really sure. Unless that, you know, the anime only scene of... The two things happening in tandem of him dying and walking out is... If that's true, then I could believe it, but I don't fucking know. Summoned him into this world, and it's probably like a vicious, endless cycle repeating itself. Like, I can see it to where he's constantly repeating a cycle. Yeah. And he cannot leave this loop. And like, for instance, he'll die. Let, let's just say this. He'll die. Well, that's the thing I'm not sure yet. Where it's like, what if he just, uh, just like abandons the seller, right? If he aban like, what happens when you stop playing the main quest line and you say, fuck it. And you go detour somewhere else. That's what I want to see happen. I want Subaru to be like, fuck it. I'm tired of this shit. I'm going to do my own thing. And then look at what kind of consequences happen maybe 15 to 20 times okay and then he gets to the point where he's asking for help he's begging for help and then he sucks in his self in from the other world into the fantasy world i can see something like that being the case here for instance but then you gotta ask how did that different timeline subaru get into that world right was he already in the isekai world maybe this is an endless cycle, this ring going around of death, Maybe. and he's trying to figure out how to escape it and trying to fix things. Maybe there's a possibility since he's in this cycle, no matter what he does, someone is going to die. Similar to, you know, I, I don't want to spoil actually, but you know, similar to the other series. Just say Steins Gate, bro. You already compared it to Steins Gate. I, you know, I have watched in the past and have reviewed. So, yeah. I believe that's what's going on here. Okay. But on top of that too though, getting a little bit more deeper into the plot, I feel like the main objective now is the MC trying to figure out everything he can do to get out of this, but also save the people that he recently met. And I think that the phone that he has is probably gonna play a huge role in the future. It's Will it? Will the cell phone, the Nokia flip phone play a huge role in the future? Well, it was used as a bartering, you know, system, no less than 20 holy coins, a media scam. We'll see. We'll see. It's definitely going to play a huge role because when you saw him take a picture yeah. of the girl that killed him twice, actually probably three times or more than that, depending if there is a cycle, the girl that killed him, he took a picture of her. And I'm willing to bet if you saw your killer, like if that was your final thoughts before you died, you're probably going to have that person integrated into your brain. You're going yeah. to remember that person. So I believe that the MC is going to go around trying to take a picture of a lot of different things to figure out what he can do or how he can use this to his advantage to outsmart people in the Oh yes, the Nokia flip phone is gonna help us outsmart everybody, bro. This is 
fuck reincarnated into another world with a smartphone, bro? This is the fucking smartphone isekai. Actually, Nokia flip phone is not a fucking smartphone. It's so, it's a relic of the fucking past, bro. The future of the series. So I believe the phone is going to be very important because... Of I personally don't think the phone is going to be that important. I think that the phone has served its duty in trying to barter against the insignia for the holy coins, but eh, that's just my take. Picture taking. But on top of this, though, he also... Yeah, also the battery usage. Like, how long is this shit gonna last? Well, there's magic in this world. Could you not charge the fucking phone with magic? Like, I don't think that's totally unfeasible. Like, I think that makes sense. ...has a way to make a lot of money because he could sell the phone for yes. over 20 holy coins according yeah. to what we found out. So it's a lot of money, apparently. 20 holy coins is unbelievable amount of money. That's like 40 gold coins, bro! Money. So because of this, we know for a fact he has an item with him that could get him rich quick. So he could possibly maybe buy a mini small band of magic users or something under his wing to be able to fight. That's also a possibility. Okay. Too. So there's a lot of different ways the MC can go about this with, you know, the phone. He could take pictures, use it as, you know, a reconnaissance, or he could sell the phone to make easy money for he can, you know... Man, he is really fucking theory crafting and cooking with the fucking cell phone, huh? Like, and, and who knows? M maybe, bro. Maybe. Get some shit done if he has to constantly repeat. Now, let's talk about the main female character. So, her name is uh, Satala. I, I, I think that's how you pronounce sure. it. Sure. She's apparently a witch, and she's. Satella is a witch, but Amelia is not Satella. But Chibi is going into this without obviously having any information while Amelia, Subaru, these names are common after in 2024, right? But yes, Subaru, so Amelia is not Satella. Amelia is Amelia. They're both half elves, though. That's kind of sus discriminated against and people don't like her because at the end of the episode which was one of the most shocking points of the episode because at this time the character is you know not dead he's not gonna die so he yells for satala and is like hey bro calls her a fucking slur in public oh boy hey and all that and she's like don't say my name in public why are you doing this and like why are you calling me a witch in public by that name and it seems like it's a name that has a heavy burden with it and well it's not don't say my name in public it's more like how why are you telling why are you saying the name of the witch of envy in public to someone that is also a half elf with silver hair right that's the association this explains why there was a very awkward character character interaction between the characters earlier on in the episode because you had to wear when she revealed her name you saw the cat familiar like oh why, why'd you do that like, she, you know was just very shocked about it because apparently she believed that since he had no idea or where he was from or where he was going or how to read that she assumed that he didn't know who she was so i believe that's why she said her name i don't think that's the reason to be honest i think that the reason that she gave in with satella was not to check that but to check if he's like if he truly is like ignorant of the culture here and if he did know of the name, how would you perceive me through that stigma? Because obviously she's been discriminated upon because she looks like Satella. She is a half-elf. She does have silver hair. She looks like the Witch of Envy, which we haven't even seen yet. But this is going off the lore of the people in the show. And to check if he is those type of people that would be willing to just like, you know, discriminate her based on those assumptions. That's probably someone that she doesn't want. But Super was like, ah, oh, what a beautiful name. Wow, so pretty, right? So that ignorant Riz, I think, paid off. And because of this now, this- In the first run. Not that shit matters anymore. That shit does not matter. Like, this is the fifth- By the fifth iteration, we overcome that. And, and like, none of that shit mattered in episode one. All that Riz gone. Information he's been given, she now thinks he's mean or an ass or something. So it depends on where next week's episode goes. I, I believe that he's probably going to probably start saying things to get her on his side and saying, hey, you died. You need to, you know, make sure you don't go here or, you know, you'll get killed too. I know where your, you know, insignia is. But the next thing too to really think about is that there is a key thing here that many of us might have overlooked. What? And that would be the ability of our main female character. Regre she can... Com the spirits arts? The ice? Can communicate with spirits. She yep. can actually talk to spirits and lesser spirits that have yet to form their own thoughts. And I believe this is probably going to play a huge role huge in the future role. of ReZero. I really believe so because first things first, let's look at, you know, the similarities here or the correlation between these two things. For one, endless cycle of death. It's a sure. tragedy. Just an endless cycle of constantly dying, having to repeat. Satala is dying. 
And because of this, you have it to where he's trying to do anything he can to stop himself from dying or others from dying. And with her being able to use, like, spirit-type magic, connect with, you know, the other world and talk to lesser spirits. Whoa, 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 other worlds? What are you talking about? Spirits can talk to other worlds? I don't know about this. Spirits, and then, you know, these other higher form of spirits like the cat. It makes me assume that that's probably going to play a part in the ability of the constant time traveling. or going. He might not be off here, though, because, like, how the fuck did Puck not react until break time when Subaru reached out to Puck and guarded against Amelia in that fifth iteration during the fight against Elsa when he didn't even meet Puck yet, right? And that was mentioned for a brief time and in, you know, zero break time. But after that, they conveniently gloss over it because this is a very important plot thing about spirits and Subaru's regression ability. So yeah, I, th I think there is something here. Going back YouTube, in the past on. and then, you know, trying to fix things. I believe there might be a form of way to have communication. Yes, Maybe. I, I, I absolutely agree with this point. This point, it has to be. It has to be because of how nonchalant Puck took it and was so cool with it. And even in break time, he didn't even question. He was like, yeah, I don't know. I think that the anime is obviously trying to hide something right now, but there is a direct correlation of the regression and whatever Puck or the spirit he is. That, that's a possibility. Who, who the hell knows? So yeah, very good stuff. I love the first- Puck is the witch of envy. Puck is the one that gave super <laughs> regression ability first episode high impressions of it yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments below i love you I, all so much Please. guys i know this is an eight-year-old video but i'm just trying to figure out any types of ReZero content that we can possibly farm without getting spoiled as we watch these episodes on a week by uh, an episode by episode basis but please go to chibi's channel like his videos and sub to him if you haven't and uh i don't know i'll try to figure out what other things i can cook up in the meantime